Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're going over Airbus's new departure briefing guidelines and look at a real-life example. Part of our everyday life as pilots is to make briefings an even more interesting and valuable part of our work. Airbus has developed a new policy, and this video will give you information on the changes of this policy and how you can adapt it to your own briefing techniques. Before joining a practical example in the cockpit, let's have a short review about the purpose of briefings. Flight crew briefings are, first of all, an essential tool for management of threats and errors that may affect your flight. The main purpose of a flight crew briefing is to enhance safety and to manage risks. By thinking outside of the box, you will more easily identify potential threats that may affect your intended operation. After identifying these threats, you can then discuss the mitigations of those threats together with your crew. The second purpose of a briefing is the identification of significant differences or deviations to standard operations, especially things that are not daily routine. At the end of the briefing, you and your flight crew colleagues should have a shared mental model of the intended operation and the likely threats alongside their mitigation strategies. Now let's observe a crew preparing for a departure out of New York JFK on a flight to Boston. Okay, I think we're ready. Your pilot monitoring, so yep. go ahead with the brief. Okay, so we are planning uh, runway 04 right for departure with the Kennedy 5 uh, SID. Initially, climb to 5,000 feet with an MSC uh, in our departure segment of 2,000 feet. And in terms of uh, fuel, uh, we have no extra. Okay, that's great. As we taxi out, we need to think about the hotspot at Juliet even though four left is closed by no time. For four right, we talked about it in the um, briefing room. We've only got 19 meters of stop margin on the wet runway there. There's no engine out SID, so as you get airborne, it's gonna be SOPs. Mm -hmm. So what do you see as the, uh, the threats? I feel a little bit uh, tired from the previous uh, long flight, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm the same. I see the threats the same. We're both a bit tired. It's the end of a long day. Uh, it's going to be even more uh, stressing with the high amount of uh, radio uh, transmissions around New York. So for the mitigations of that, we need to be really vigilant mm -hmm. with the radio calls. We need to listen out for our call sign, listen out for our clearances. Of course, in the event of uh, failure, uh, when I take the uh, radios, that we need to remember to prioritize to fly, navigate, and communicate uh, after that. Yeah, okay. would I agree. Questions? No, thank you. Let's go. In this video, the pilot monitoring started the briefing, and he states the view of the intended plan after checking the FMGC setup. Why does Airbus suggest that the pilot monitoring starts? It's simply because by having the pilot monitoring initiating the briefing section, the pilot flying can be assured that the pilot monitoring has the same expected monitoring framework. The first part of the briefing should normally only contain the intended takeoff runway, the SID designator, the first stop altitude, the minimum sector altitude or minimum off-route altitude for the client trajectory and the extra fuel and time. Afterwards, the pilot flying gave additional strategic operational items important for the pilot monitoring. This part contains items like hotspots of the planned taxi route, the stop margin for RTO, briefing of the engine out departure route, and their considerations for a potential return. It is a good idea to shortly recap non-standard operations at that stage. For example, if you have a cross-bleed engine start, it might be worth briefing this procedure during this stage. For the identification of possible threats, it is again the pilot monitoring that starts the briefing and is continued with the joint discussion of the mitigation strategies. At the end of the briefing, there is a miscellaneous section. Items that could be discussed at this stage could be the level of automation intended after takeoff, for example. Thanks for tuning into this bite-sized tutorial on departure briefings.